So this is an S1 Volvo coupler. Uh, this one has a custom profile to the gusset. It's got cutouts. So this one is for a bolt-on adapter. So that is clearance so they can get the wrench in there to put all the bolts on. Right there. This cutout. You'll see the bottom plate comes with bolt holes. And that goes all the way around. So there will be bolts that'll be right in here. So you need to be able to get in there with a the wrench. It is a 30 mil nut. So it needs a, a large wrench to get in there. So this is stage one of the fit up. We do it this way to make it easier to weld the insides. Up inside here, we need to be able to get our hand in there and the whip to weld. If we fit this whole assembly together, it's very difficult to weld the inside. There is a bar that goes right through here too. So if he welds that in, he can't physically get in there. Yeah, there's a pin that... This is the last thing that we put in. Yeah, the very first time I ever did one of these, I fit the whole thing up and then uh, had to really struggle to try to reach all the way in from the back side and blindly weld the inside. It was, I did it, but it was just, it was a struggle. This is why we, uh, we fit and weld this way in three stages. There's very few people that do these, right? The Volvo adapters. Yeah, I think there's few that do them and it's nice that they are easy to make. You can make a few of them on the shelf most times. And then we have the ability such as this one to do a bolt on as opposed to a weld on, which we would stock more of. Yeah, they're easy to fit on the shelf. Yes. So another yeah. thing is that we can't put them up in the racks. No, no. Stage two is simply just putting the bolt on plate on. So after we, uh, we weld all this out. There's bracing. There's bracing underneath to hold the gussets from distorting too much. We cut those bracings off, fit the bolt-on plate on, and then weld that part out. Once that's done, all the inside welds are complete, so we can go ahead and fit everything else on and weld it. For you to make a new design, a custom design, how much CAD work is that? For this one, we lucked out it was minimal CAD work because it was just a change of the bottom plate. Because the S1, S2, S3 are specific, there's very minimal changes to be made for these. It's more a change to the bottom plate. So this, this cutout here is not typically there? That is correct, it's and not typically there. Does it affect like a, the structure at all? Is it weaker? No, it will, it no, too? but the, the plate is thick enough that it will still be okay. The bottom plate is very thick as well. So once everything's welded and structured together with the pin, it's still as strong. Have we done this sort of custom before? I believe in the past we have, yes, with bolt-on because you do have to get the wrench in to get all the bolts. Because they will go straight across in a square pattern. So they do come in, li in line with the tines. Because it's custom, how long does it take, does it change the lead time as well? Because we need to put that into our nesting for all of our plate cutting as well. That does change the lead time, yes, because it won't be on the shelf. We do did, have to cut it in. Did, did we cut this plate ourselves or did we order this plate kit in? I believe we cut this ourselves. Because yeah. I know we were moving equipment around and so forth, so it's a little... Yes, this one I believe we did cut ourselves. I think we only had the one piece cut off-site just because it was a smaller piece and there was no point of buying a 4x8 plate of that particular plate. But other than that, this was cut in-house on our water jet. And what's the total weight of this once it's done? Well, almost 700 pounds. So it's pretty solid 
piece of a good chunk of steel. Yeah, yeah. and this is the smaller, this, the uh, S1 Volvo. He uses a 70 mil uh, piece of bar stock. So step two is to put the bolt on plate on and weld the inside. If we get a lot of warping on that bolt on plate, it'll have to be milled flat. When you say like the, the final fit up, you, you mean you're just gonna not include some of those items on there? Yeah, so all the top item, all, all the, the pin, we'll just leave that all till after it's uh, been milled flat. Just to make it easier on the machines? Yeah. yeah, so this goes on, there's two other pieces. This eventually goes on. And you're just gonna, you're gonna hold off on doing a lot of that? Yeah, till the end. He's going to want to flip this upside down to machine it so that way he doesn't have to block all this up while he's machining. It makes it easier for yeah. him. How do you check to make sure it's flat? This, uh, so the reason why I put this bar on in this step is because it helps stiffen things up too. So it generally doesn't really warp once this is on because it's so thick, right? Before I, I put my pin in, I put my level on this bar, level up the table so this is sitting level. And then when I install the pin, I make it level. So everything's, everything's true to itself. So this is three quarter plate, right? Three quarter thick plate. So both these plates are three quarter thick. So I'm aiming for a three eight weld. So you look at the top of it, where it's meeting the plate at the top. That gives you the leg length of the weld, which is the weld size. So we're good. The bottom leg is usually a little bit longer, just because of gravity. And then the throat depth, the reinforcement of the weld is this side of the gauge. We're good there. You don't want the weld to be concave. That's basically what reinforces your, your weld. So I've done a root weld. I flip it, do a root weld on the opposite side, put two more passes on to bring it up to 3 8 And then I flipped it, and I'm just finishing off my two more passes on the last side here. So I flip it and try to distribute the heat evenly so every time you weld it puts stress on the grain structure and it wants to pull everything towards your weld so you want to you want to flip it and try to balance that out throughout the welding process at this point here it's just the structural stuff so you just have the ears here and then the back ribs, that's it. But when he flips it down and he starts getting the pat pads on the top and all those components that are what the uh, Volvo coupler uses to attach it, that's when you're gonna wanna these point are, some stuff out. These are basically just risers, right? So we can adapt the Volvo to the bolt-on plate. Yeah. Once we put that uh, bolt-on plate, you won't really be able to see inside. It's, it's a little trickier because I, I got to put these welds inside. So I'm going to have to reach in and weld the inside. So at least this way, I only really have to struggle with a portion of it, yeah.
need it. I think we need it. So I went through it too. So. The last stage was uh, you were out here when I was welding this on, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's since then it's been drilled and milled flat. Yeah. And now we're putting the finishing touches on. What machine did you mill it on? Uh, the horizontal mill, because the vertical mill didn't, doesn't have enough travel. Right. First off, I would just spot each hole with my center drill, verify my uh, positions once again, and then put the full diameter through. Got my digital at zero, I put my coordinates in. Just use the center drill and just kind of mark where all the holes are going and use the digital readout on the machine. And Mike did it? Yeah. So we did all that in house? Yeah. Because we used to outsource like the million, right? Yeah. Because we didn't have the equipment. Yeah. And you have to go to multiple buildings. And now we just, we just crammed everything all into one building. And yeah. Well, and right, you keep it in house instead of paying someone else to do it. Well, yeah, you keep the cost down, but also it's a little more reliable. Yeah. We send it out to. Uh, we don't know what they did. We, all we know is how it went out and how it came back to us. We don't even, we don't know what they did to it yeah. during this time. What if we missed something? So I think in-house, always. Yeah. There's a plunger on the coupler that after the pin couples in, it'll push the wedge up into that interface there. And that's what cinches up this coupler type. And these are made so that if any slack ends up needing to be filled, we can send shim plates to build that up or replace if needed. This is critical. The tolerance on this would be fairly tight. No? Well, well, again, here there's um, two one-inch bolts with washers that, um, that are threaded in here and actually they can be adjusted for another set of plungers but, okay, on the but coupler. This, but then this lateral movement would be pretty important, no? That's right, and that's why on our jig, if I don't know, you can yeah, yeah, get that in there. So, uh, did you use this jig already to, to get these on? Is that um, well, this is kind of a, like, a go, no-go jig, right? Checker jig. Mm -hmm. Ah, so it's, you don't, um, it's not to help fabricate it, it's just a quality control. This time we actually used it to fit this wedge piece on, because that's the profile of it. It's tricky to actually give a dimension to check that. Mm. So, I thought, well, instead of putting these on, put these on last, hook this onto the pin, once the pin is in, slide the wedge right up tight into here, and tack it in place, and there you go. You know, it's gonna... Yeah. So we've been able to reduce the cost of these with a bunch of uh, improvements. Oh yeah. You know, we, we've talked about the outsourcing, re removing that, doing everything in-house, um, which created stress, but it did reduce the cost, actually. The uh, improvement of some of the designs, being able to get in there, the uh, using some of these jigs, improved quality control, and so you like this here. Then, do you think you'll make a, a new one that can uh, that you can do for fabrication for the fit up? We do have another jig for fitting. Actually, uh, the the gusset pieces underneath are tricky to fit. So, uh, and you use that on this one as so well? I, di I did make a jig for Did all. you have that? Could we see it? Uh, I made a jig for all three of the uh, Volvo couplers. I mean, simple enough. Yeah. So the pin fits into here. And then you just clamp the ears onto here. When did you make this? Recently or have you had it for ages? Oh. A couple of years ago, I think. A couple of years. Because I feel like you were making, you, we had a, uh, a time where things were starting to really pick up. And you just said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to 
stop what I'm doing and I'm gonna make a bunch of jigs. And I feel like that was about two years ago. Yeah, we made, I, I believe it was the S1 and the S2, but we never made an S3 because we said, oh, we barely ever build an S3. And then it- The next order that comes through is like, an S3. <laughs> There's an S3 coming through. I said, can I build an S3 jig? And he said, absolutely. So now we got a jig for all three sizes. Well, I was, I was reading um, a book by uh, Ray Kroc on McDonald's, and he said, think big. That if you, if you think you're only gonna need two cash registers, put three on there, and then you'll, you'll try to fill them up. Yeah. So th think big is what I like. Yeah, definitely made the job a lot more efficient, quicker, easier. Quality check, check the dimensions, it all checks out. So He's ready to start welding it. There's a few measurements that I check on the blueprint, and then I put that jig on, make sure everything fits. And you're you're gonna check it as well, aren't you? I was already out this morning with, with the guys. So you've been doing you've been doing periodic checks, or you, oh, you've been doing the measurement checks already before they even started welding. Uh, and in process. And that was something that sort of suffered before because we had people in different locations. And then sort of, you gotta kind of wait for them to come by and then do the checks. Now, now they just... Uh... The interaction with us and the design crew is really, I think it's really important it's to really have. Good. Yeah. yeah. How, how often are you walking into that office up front with the team? Uh, myself, quite often. Yeah. yeah. Also, for one of the newer uh, guys up there, right, it's good to get them out here as much as possible and involved with hands-on, right, so they can get yep. more of an understanding. Sort of a boots on the ground. Yeah. Get their hands dirty. It's really, it's really good because it's totally a different world to draw something up on CAD than it is to actually physically build it and put it together. Yeah. Well, we were talking about that with the plate cutting, how they were two-dimensional plate uh, drawings to be cut, but in fact they're cutting them onto a three-dimensional surface, which is the plate, uh, and because the plate is warped. Yeah. So. Yeah, and you don't see that. Anymore. Yeah, it's. In CAD land, it's, it's everything's perfect, nothing <laughs> more. CAD land, yeah. <laughs> oh, we also have a new paint booth coming. You guys heard about that? Coming here? No, it's coming to Buffalo. Okay. It's because we need, the, uh, we need the overhead crane to load. So it's, and it's uh, nine feet tall, and it's about, I want to say, uh, 20 feet long. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Because all the inside welding has been done here. Mm -hmm. If we put this pin in first, you're, you're not gonna be able to see what you're doing. You can't, you can't weld that properly with this pin in the way. Do you still try to clean inside too? Yeah. yeah. But not, and do you try to get paint inside as well? Um, oh yeah, they, they spray paint in there, yeah. And so do you have to have to put something on here or is this? Uh... Nope, that's it. So no spatter, It's good. Looks nice and clean, professional. Should we try the uh, jig one more time? Perfect, still good. Next step would be go to paint and, and then uh, ship it. Like and subscribe.